Greetings, salutations. Welcome to this Midday Power Surge, Thursday, July 1st, 2021. Brothers and sisters, can you believe it? We have come to this day and hour, July 1st. Can you believe that? Well, my friends, time is wrapping up. And we're told that the final movements will indeed be rapid ones. Safe to serve international, first time viewers, welcome one, welcome all to this midday power surge. I'm your host, Andrew Henriquez. This midday power surge presentation has been born out of family worship that we had several hours ago. I had something else planned, but the Lord said, this is what I want you to share. So my friends, the things that we are going to cover are of vital importance. I know you're busy. I know you're in the marketplaces. I know you're running errands, but could you please give the Lord a few moments of your time? By God's grace, you're not going to waste your time for the next 30, 40 minutes. We have been showing that all throughout scripture, the prophecy indicates that final movements will be rapid ones. And a Sunday law crisis is right upon us. The second coming of Jesus Christ is even at the doors. And the Bible shows us events that will precede the great crisis, mark of the beast, and the second coming of Jesus. And one particular scripture I'll point you to is Luke 21 and verse 25 through verse number 27. And the focus here could be the perplexities, distress of nations. But I want to focus on this phrase, the sea and the waves roaring. Now, we know that is pointing to the literal uh, uh, phenomena of nature. Sea and waves roaring, meaning tidal waves. Yes, tsunamis, calamities. But also in scripture, the sea, waters represent people. Revelation 17, verse 12, 15. Sea points to people. So people will be roaring. Great demands 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 and friends what we're going to see is that just before the mark of the beast is enforced it is the people that will demand a sunder law be enforced fulfilling revelation 13 verse 14 through verse 17 the people will demand it that demand will first be seen in the united states of america as a result take a look at this this is showing us how we have rebellious nuns. Yes, friends, Roman Catholic nuns. Rebellious youth demanding. President Biden faces first major climate protest as president. And who are the ones instigating this? Huh, look at that, friends, top line. The Sunrise Movement. Who comprise the Sunrise Movement? Youth campaigners behind the Green New Deal. And friends, do I have to now remind you, refresh your memory, that the Green New Deal is also calling for a day of rest, even climate lockdown, and the Green New Deal is linked to Pope Francis's encyclical Laudato Si, which is calling for Sunday rest by law, this is where we are. Here we have a youth movement. And remember, just before Christ was crucified, was there a youth children movement? Yes. But that was a genuine youth children movement. When the adults were forced to keep silent and silence, the youth, the children, were the ones proclaiming the message carrying forward the movement. And so in the last days, we must expect a counterfeit youth movement, a counterfeit children movement. All right, let that sink in. With that being said, I want to give you another application. 
where are the modern day true genuine youth movement to fulfill education the book education page 271 which such an army of workers as are a youth rightly trained how soon would the message of a crucified risen and soon coming savior be carried to the world how soon might the end come the end of suffering sorrow and sin let's get back to the article take a look at this friends there it is headline sunrise movement getting more and more angry more and more angry and what is the context here we need climate laws more and more angry in case you have forgotten let me quickly remind you of this statement in Revelation chapter 11. The Bible shows us under the seventh trumpet, seven last, complete. The seventh trumpet, just before the second coming of Christ, in verse number 15 to verse 18. But focus on verse number 18 of Revelation chapter 11. And the nations were angry angry and the context is notice last phrase of verse 18 and shouldest destroy them which destroy the earth that can be applied to the climate crisis as a result the nations are angry who comprise the nations people you mean youth yes look at the screen friends more and more angry there it is brothers and sisters and then it says, God's wrath is going to come. Verse 18. And what event precedes or triggers the wrath of God? Based on Revelation chapter 14. Come on. Those of you alive. Chapter 14. Verse 9 and verse 10. What great event brings God's wrath? It's the mark of the beast. And what is that mark of the beast? Sunday worship by law. Connect the dots. And the Pope is saying, along with his youth and allies, we need climate lockdown. We need Sunday rest by law. And notice the connection. Once they're angry, they'll call for climate laws, which also include primarily Sunday rest, Sunday worship by law. And then comes what? God's wrath. Revelation chapter 11. Back to the quote. Look at the screen. Take a look at this, friends. Notice who have joined the youth movement. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. There it is, my friends. Second sentence. The chants included. Notice it says, we made it clear. First sentence. We made it clear. The first time, Mr. President, you're going to hear our what? Our demands. Our what, friends? Our demands, underscore that word, our demands, whether we're inside or outside of the White House, you haven't responded. Now we're back to make sure you understand us clearly. Notice now, it's no climate or no deal and no compromises, no excuses. That's the statement there, my friends. Clear as day. The demands are going to increase. Are we nearing the end? We are nearing the end. We are back. These movements are going to continue until a Sunday law is enforced. Is this serious? Because when the Sunday law is enforced, all of us will have to make our final decision. And then we should be sealed by God and saved or be marked for destruction. And who are the ones leading out with the young people? There they are, my friends. Jamal Bowman from New York. You know him. Corey Bush. All right, friends. And Aos Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. This is the movement. Look at the quote now. Great controversy. Page 5. 92. What does that statement say, my friends? Look at it carefully. It says, watch carefully. Even in free America, red words, rulers and legislators, in order to secure public favor, what's that? The vote. What's that? The vote. 
What happens, friends? It says that they will yield to a popular demand. That's the demand for a law enforcing Sunday observance. I want to ask you a question. How close are we to the end, my friends? How close? And then Revelation 12 and verse 17 will be fulfilled. Am I ready? Are you ready? It's a solemn thought for each one of us to consider a solemn thought. Okay. I'm going to transition now to what my family considered, analyzed prayerfully during our family worship several hours ago. And the scripture is Matthew chapter 25. Again, I know you're busy, but consider with me Matthew chapter 25. This is a very solemn presentation, brothers and sisters. In Matthew 25, I'm going to consider verse 1 through verse 13. But I'm going to be perusing and touching on a few verses just to make a solemn point. In verse number 1, it says, Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins. How many? Ten. Which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. Okay. Talk to me, those of you who are alive. All right. Who would the virgins represent? The virgins. Ten virgins. They would represent a group of people who are professing a true faith, a true religion. They are not called whores or harlots, but virgins. 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse number 2. God's professed faithful people. Is that point clear? The Bible now says that they took lamps. Lamps. What would the lamps represent? Mm -hmm. The lamps would represent the word of God. Psalm 119 and verse 105. That's the word of God. But friends, I want to focus you on something here. Pay attention. It's not just the word of God, just generally speaking. But it's, it, it is the word of God based on prophecy. The lambs represent the word of God, specifically the prophecies in the word of God. Let's confirm that. The next phrase of verse 1 says, And they went forth to meet the bridegroom. In other words, they were expecting the return of the bridegroom. Is that not prophecy? That's prophecy. Yet we have people among us telling us, Don't focus on prophecies from the Bible. Hmm. Sad, right? Sad. But the Bible says they went forth to meet the bridegroom. Okay, so who would the bridegroom represent? Put it down. The bridegroom would represent Jesus Christ. Isaiah chapter 62 and verse number 5. Yes, friends. Now skip on down to verse 2 now. Are we all in this group? Yes. Again, are we all in this group? Yes. We are all among the ten virgins. Look at verse 2. A very solemn presentation. Verse 2. And five of them were wise, and five were what? Foolish. Mm -hmm. Now, friends, I want everyone to focus now on verse number 3. The Bible now says, They that were foolish took their lamps, watch now, and took no oil with them. Okay. So here is a group called Foolish. They had lamps. They were studying the prophecies. They were hearing the prophecies. They were all expecting the second coming of Christ. But the Bible says that they took no oil with them. Now here's my point. And everybody, note this point clearly. The five foolish virgins had no extra oil. Put that down. The five foolish virgins had no extra, underscore extra, no extra oil, no oil on reserve. Let's prove that. Verse 3, they had lamps but took no oil with them. Wait a minute, was oil in their lamps? Come to verse, verse number 8. 
The Bible says oil was in their lamps, but they had no extra oil. Verse 8, and the foolish said unto the wise, give us of your oil. Why? For our lamps are gone out. The only way lamps can go dim, lamps can be extinguished, the light can be extinguished, it means they previously had oil in their lamps and their lamps were shining, giving light. Mm -hmm. But they had no, they took no oil with them. They had no extra oil. Let's prove it. Second point. In contrast, look at the wise. Verse number four. Verse four now says, but the wise, the wise took oil in their vessels. Note that the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. That's it, friends. With their lamps. The wise had lamps. The lamps were glowing, but they had extra oil in vessels. Extra oil in vessels. Now watch the point. Do we see foolish? Do we see wise? And the foolish had no extra oil in vessels? Separate from their lamps? Look with me. Hold your place in Matthew 25. Look with me at Proverbs chapter 21. And the Bible says in verse number 20 of Proverbs 21. Look at verse 20. The Bible says there is treasure to be desired. And oil in the dwelling of the wise. Oil in the dwelling of the wise. But... A foolish man, but a foolish man spends it up. No extra. Go back with me to Matthew 25. Look at the quote, my friends. Christ, object lessons, page 405. It confirms. It says, but there is a delay. Hour after hour passes. The watchers come weary and fall asleep. What's happening here, friends? What's happening here? There was a tiring time. Look at Matthew 25 and verse number 5. But while, listen, while the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. Was there a tiring time? Yes. And because of the tiring time, this time of delay, what happened? The foolish had lamps, oil in the lamps, but the oil ran out. Do you see it now? But they had no extra oil in their vessels. And as a result, they could not last the time of delay, the tiring time. And they were found unprepared, unready. But the wise had extra oil. And in the time of delay, verse 6 now, when the, the cry was heard, at midnight, the wise had light. From their lamps. Why? Because now they could pour into their lamps the extra oil that they had reserved in their vessels. Watch the statement now. Second sentence. At midnight the cry is heard. Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go you out to meet him. Watch this. The sleepers suddenly awaking spring to their feet. The ten maidens seize their lamps and begin to trim them in haste to go forth. But five had neglected. Watch, friends. But five have neglected to fill their flasks with oil. Do you see it now? Do you see? They had no extra oil in extra vessels. They did not anticipate so long a delay and they have not prepared for the emergency. Now watch. In distress, they appeal to their wiser companion saying, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are going out, says the margin. But the waiting five with their freshly, what does freshly intimate? But the waiting five wise virgins with their freshly, Trimmed oil uh, lamps have emptied their flagons. Do you see it now, my friends? The five wise virgins had extra oil. 
their lambs were freshly trimmed in that time of crisis. There it is, my friends. There it is. There it is. Notice as I read on. While the foolish went to buy, the procession moved on and left them behind. The five with lighted lamps joined the throng and entered the house with the bridal train. And the door was shut. Hmm. Listen, friends. When the foolish virgins reached the banqueting hall, they received an unexpected denial. Listen. The master of the feast declared, I know you not. Matthew 25, verse 9 to verse 13. They were left standing without in the empty street in the blackness of the night. Brothers, and here's the point. Only those who had lamps with oil were able to join the procession. Note that. Only those who had lamps with oil were able to enter the banqueting hall. Those with lamps but no oil, no light, could not enter the banqueting hall. They were not a part of the procession. What is God saying to us? Listen now, friends. What would the oil represent? Those of you alive. The oil represents the Holy Spirit. The oil represents character. Write down 1 Samuel chapter 16 and verse number 13. That's the oil. That means, let's link the dots now. The five foolish virgins had lamps. They were hearing, reading the prophecies. The second coming of Christ is even at the doors. It's near. But there was an apparent delay. Just like right now. What happened? They knew prophecies but had no oil. They knew prophecies but had no experience. Nothing extra. And the question is, do we have enough? Do we have extra oil, extra power to endure this tarrying time? What am I saying? We have been showing current events after current events. The mark of the beast is near. The son of the law is near, but we haven't seen it yet. It is an apparent delay. The second coming of Christ is even at the doors. It is an apparent delay. Oh, my friends, may we not be found with lamps, but having no extra oil. Listen, friends, it says, watch carefully, last sentence, that scene in Matthew 25, it typifies those who will be living just before the second coming of Jesus Christ. That's it, my friends. Now, again, do you have extra? That's the question. Do you have enough? I want to say it this way. Write down. It was the cry at midnight that awakened all the virgins, that awakened the church, the cry at midnight. What does that cry at midnight represent? It represents an event that signals the close of probation. Mm -hmm. And what event based on prophecy signals the close of probation? Hear me carefully. Listen attentively. It is the mark of the beast. That's Revelation 14, verse 9 and verse 10. Chapter 15, verse 1. Chapter 16, verse 1, verse 2. And that scripture, those scriptures mention the seven last plagues. Next step. Was there a midnight cry? A cry at midnight? Just before the Exodus, Moses, the Hebrews... In Exodus chapter 11, chapter 12, yes. Did that, was that linked to the falling of the 10 plagues? Yes. Cry at midnight with the plagues. All right. And what event brings the plagues? The mark of the beast. I just gave you those texts a while ago, friends. We are here. Look at the statement, my friends. It says, character is revealed by a crisis. 
Second quotation, it is in a crisis that character is revealed. And that second quotation from Christ's object lessons, page 412, is dealing with the ten virgins. And it mentions the cry at midnight. It typifies for us in the last days the great and final test, the close of human probation which I just showed you from scripture, is the mark of the beast, seven last plagues, the Sunday law crisis. Are we nearing? Yes, we're nearing. Look, the last test, the final test, is the mark of the beast, the Sunday law crisis, GC. Great controversy, page 605. Next. There it is, my friend. It is the Sunday law crisis. That's what I want you to see. Do you have extra? <laughs> do you have enough oil? Are you storing up? My friends, do we come to midday power surge, Sabbath services, study to show, prophetic insights, just to hear about how close we are to the end? Or do we also come to receive... Extra oil. That's it, my friends. Extra oil. Go back to Matthew 25. Look with me again at verse 4. Do you want to be wise virgins? If so, type in the words wise virgins. I'm going to speak to you now about something very practical. Verse number 4. Listen as I read. But the wise virgins took oil in their vessels with their lamps. My friends, I took those two words, oil and vessels, and traced those words from Genesis to Revelation. Do you want to see what I unearth? What I uncovered from Scripture? Well, friends, you have no choice. I'm going to share that with you. And look with me first at 1 Kings chapter 17. Brothers and sisters, Here's the point. In 1 Kings chapter 17, was there a great climate emergency? Yes. Was there a famine in Israel? Yes. Was there a great drought? Yes. Dearth in the land? Yes. Yes, friends. Are we living in that time? Signs of the last days? Yes. Question. What was Elijah doing? Hear me carefully. Elijah was engaged in doing God's work. Yes. Now question, how did God feed Elijah? Yes, by the brook Cherith. That's not where I'm going right now. The second instance where God fed his missionary, where God fed his messenger, who was focused on doing God's work, was from... A widow, a widow, my friends, did that widow, by the way, let me ask you, those of you who are alive, what did that widow have in her house to feed Elijah, to feed her son? What did that widow have contextually? What's our theme? The Bible says, thank you, Romario, Rene, uh, all right, Jonathan, that widow, she had oil in her vessel. Yes, friends. And the Bible says the account of Elijah will be repeated. Look at the screen. I know some of you are in the marketplace. So take a look at the screen. 1 Kings chapter 17. Look at verse 9. Arise, Elijah. Get thee to Zarephath. Why, God? Why, Lord? Blue words. I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. What does a woman typify in prophecy? A church. Look at verse 12 of 1 Kings 17. And she said unto Elijah, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel. What are the next red words? Seven words and a little oil in a cruise. Brothers and sisters, did the woman have oil in her vessel? I didn't hear all of you. If, if you see it, my friends, type in oil in the vessel. That's it. Notice, my friends, it says, 
Verse 13, And Elijah now said unto her, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said, but make me therefore a little cake first. A little cake first. A little cake first. Verse 14, For thus saith God, The barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the vessel of oil fail, neither shall the cruise of oil fail. My friends, God shall send rain. Look at that, my friends. Verse 15, And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah, and she and Elijah and her house did eat how long? For many days. The margin says, the margin says, many, many, the word many means a full year. That's it, brothers and sisters. Do you have extra? Do you have enough? Now, friends, several things I'm going to say right here. Do not become discouraged. These truths are, are, are impacting you. I was going to say they're hitting you. Yes, friends, I am inundating you with present truth. But oh, my friends, we may become discouraged through Satan's whisperings and circumstances. Pastor, how am I going to endure? I don't even have literal oil in my vessel, oil in my cruise, oil in my cupboard. I am poor. I'm starving. My cupboard, my pantry is empty. Hear me carefully. The encouragement is in the account and life of Elijah. Because he was focused on God's work, God supplied his needs. Elijah did not know that God had somebody else storing up oil in their vessel. No, oh, brothers and sisters. In other words, God right now has people storing up oil in their vessels. To feed those of us who have nothing. Praise God. Praise God. But friends, we must be focused on conversion. Like Elijah. We must be focused on God's work. So God then can providentially, miraculously lead us to those who he is preparing to supply our needs. Praise God. Write this quotation down. Yes. Listen, Ministry of Healing, page 481, our Heavenly Father has a thousand ways to provide for us of which we know nothing. And that those who accept this one principle, which principle? Of making the service of God supreme will find, will find perplexities vanish and a plain path before their feet Praise God. I'll give you a second quote. Volume 8 and page 10. It says, God has the means for the removal of every, every difficulty that those who love him, those who serve him, mm -hmm, serve him, and accept the means he employs may be delivered. Praise God. Praise God. That means all of us are in two groups. We're either like Elijah or we are like the widow. Now, second point. You may not have enough, but just store up and consecrate what you have to God. Pray over what you have and God will multiply it. If that point is clear, just type in the words, Amen. That widow only had one Vessel of oil left. Only one vessel, friends. Only one vessel. But she sanctified what she had. She gave it to God first. And God multiplied it. And she had food, sustenance, provisions for 360 biblical days. One full year, the Bible says. Praise God. Do not become discouraged. This is a solemn presentation. Now, look at the juxtaposition here, friends. It's powerful. We began with the ten virgins. The five wise had 
oil in their vessels, but had nothing they could not shear, impart it with the foolish virgins. One reason is the oil points to character, and character is not transferable. But notice now, notice now, in this account with Elijah and the widow, the widow was able to transfer, to shear the oil with Elijah, the literal oil. Do you see it now, my friends? That is the juxtaposition. And a woman typifies the church. Elijah also typifies the church. Brothers and sisters, Malachi chapter 4, verse 5, verse 6. The accounts of Elijah will be repeated in the last days. Friends, do I have oil? Do you have extra? That's the question. Okay. You remember I told you I'm tracing the words of oil and vessel throughout scripture? I'll give a second witness. Are you ready? If you're ready, type in the words, I am ready. For the second witness. Okay, go to 2 Kings. 2 Kings chapter 4. The first was Elijah. The second is Elisha. Ready for this, my friends? Now watch. By the way, I know you're busy, so I'll provide the text for you. Look at the screen, my friends. There it is. 2 Kings chapter 4. Look at verse 1. The Bible says, now I'm going to read this. And please don't sleep on me. It's very, very important. I'm not going to paraphrase this. Listen, verse 1. Now, there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets unto Elisha, saying, Thy servant, my husband, is dead. And O oh, Elijah, we're in debt. And now the creditor is come to enslave my two sons. Elijah. Elisha, I need help. Verse 2. And Elisha said unto her, What shall I do for thee? Tell me, what hast thou in the house? Oh, get ready for it now. And she said, Thine handmaiden hath not anything in the house except, except a pot of oil. Brothers and sisters. Mm, mm, mm. In a crisis, in a life and death matter, what did this woman have in her home? Talk to me. Did she have a pot of oil? She had oil in her vessel, in her house. That's it, brothers and sisters. She had oil in her vessel. Is there a crisis coming? What must we be found with if we are wise? Have oil in our vessel. Let's be clear. We need two applications of the oil. The spiritual oil, we must be converted. The Holy Spirit in our hearts, in our lives. Amen. And the temporal oil, physically speaking, food, provisions. That's it. Oil in our homes. Read on. It says, verse 3, Then Elisha said, Go, borrow the vessels. And listen, bring empty vessels. Don't borrow a few. Mm -mm. Borrow many empty vessels. Verse 4, look at this now. And when thou art come in, thou shalt shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons and pour out into all those vessels and thou shalt set aside that which is full. Brothers and sisters, what did Elisha tell her to do? Go borrow empty vessels. Not a few, but many empty vessels. Look at the blue words. I wonder what this means. I wonder what is meant when Elijah told her, Listen, go into your house and shut, blue words, and shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons. Those of you who are alive, what could that mean? Go into your house. With the empty vessels. Hmm? And shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons. What could that mean? My friends, hear me. Hear God. It means, it means to fast 
and pray, to fast and pray. Go to Matthew chapter 6. This is a potent presentation. Do I have enough? Do you have enough? Matthew chapter 6, verse number 6, it says, But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy father, which is in secret, and thy father, which seeth in secret, shall reward thee openly. Elisha was making it clear. It's not I, Elisha, that will be working the miracle, but it is God. Go into your home, shut the door upon thee and thy sons. Question. So who are the ones to fast and pray? Not only the mother. Application. Not only parents, but parents and children. Do you see why we need more all-night prayer meetings? If you want more all-night prayer meetings, type in the words, all-night prayer meetings. Do you see why we need more days for fasting and prayer? Are we not in a time of crisis? Type in the words, days of fasting and prayer are needed. Amen. Amen. Let's read on. Matthew 6, verse 17. But thou, when thou fastest, listen, anoint thine head. Anoint thy head. That's oil. Verse 18. That thou appear not unto men to fast, but unto thy father, which is in secret. And thy father, which sees in secret, shall reward thee how? Reward thee openly. Look at this now. Verse 5. So she went from Elisha and shut the door upon her and upon her sons. Listen now. And she poured the oil into all the empty vessels. Verse 6. And now she told her sons, bring me more vessels. In other words, not only mother, but her sons were a part of the miracle. My friends, all family members have a role to play. Mm -hmm. So God can work a miracle for all the family members within. It's time, husbands, it's time, fathers, set your house in order. That's why we began that uh, podcast series, Uncut. Yes, for single men and married men, it's time. Read on, listen now, read words. And then her son said, Mom, there's no vessel left. All the empty vessels are now filled. And now the, the, the miraculous oil stopped flowing. Verse 7, and she came now to Elisha. And what did Elisha now say now? Go, blue words, go sell the oil. And what now? Pay thy debt. And live thou and thy children of the rest. Brothers and sisters. That means the empty vessels that were borrowed from her neighbors, now she could bless her neighbors with a financial gift. Praise God for that, brothers and sisters. Praise God for that. And now she could pay the creditors and deliver her sons from bondage. A crisis. My friends, is this encouraging? Why were these things written? To encourage us. But here's my point. Do we have empty vessels? Because the miracle could not have been wrought unless she had empty vessels. Do you know what I'm going to say now, Lord? Empty my vessel. Lord, make me an empty vessel so you can pour in the oil. What do you say, my friend? If this is your sentiment, type in the words, Lord, make me an empty vessel. Type in the words, Lord, fill me with the holy oil. As I empty myself, empty myself of all that is sinful, pride and selfishness. My friends, watch this point. As I bring this to a close, many have lamps, but no oil. The lamps is light. The lamps, God's word, power. But many have no oil. 
Hear me? The oil is character. The oil is character. Amen. The oil is the, the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Look at the quote now, friends. We are told a time is going to come. Many of God's professed people will pray one day, Lord, give me your spirit. Fill me with the oil, just like many of us are saying. And we are told some are going to receive light, power. That's the lamp. Also, love, joy, and peace. That's the oil, the fruit of the spirit. That's one group. But a second group will pray, Lord, give me the oil. Give me your spirit. And the, and the devil and Satan will breathe upon them. And on holy influence. They will have light. That's the lamp. They will have power. That's the lamp. But no love, no sweet joy, love, and peace. No oil. Look at the screen, my friends. There is the quote. Pause the video and read the quote. This is the first group. They have lamp. They have oil. Why oil? Red words at the bottom. In that breath was light, power, much love, joy, and peace. And what says Galatians chapter 5, verse 22, my friends? The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, and peace. What? That's the oil. But the second group, pause the video, read that, my friends. Father, give us thy spirit. But the devil will give them an unclean spirit, unholy influence. Blue words, they have light, power, but no sweet, love, joy, and peace. No oil. That's it. No oil. Last two sentences. Oh, my friends. And they were in a backsliding condition. And they were cut off and they were lost. This is what God is saying to us. Brothers and sisters, if this doesn't awaken you, what else will? Do you have extra? Do you have enough? Lord, make me an empty vessel. Give me victory over sin. Fill me with the oil, spiritually speaking. And hear me now. Only those who are being converted, God is going to supernaturally supply their needs in times of crises now and during the final great crisis, the mark of the beast, sun the law with persecution, and we won't be able to buy or sell. What says that pastor? I'll tell you. Matthew 6 and verse 33, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. What things? Food, clothing. What things? Ah, oh, friends, whatever you lack. Let's close. Lord, make me an empty vessel. Make me a vessel you can fill with your spirit. Look at this, friends. It says, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 19. Those who have God's seal, God knows them. What's the seal? They depart from iniquity. That's verse 19. Skip on down to verse 21. If a man therefore purge himself from all sin, all iniquity, blue words on the line, that man, that woman shall be a vessel unto honor. Praise God, my friends. A vessel unto honor who wants to be a vessel unto honor lord type in the words lord make me a vessel unto honor a vessel that honors you my friends honor means to glorify and first corinthians chapter 6 and verse 19 says what know you not that your body is a temple of the holy ghost which is in you which you have of God you are not your own therefore because you are bought with a price therefore glorify God in your body in your spirit which are God's yes a vessel unto honor 
a vessel to glorify God. So God can fill you with the oil. Let's close. Verse 22 now. It says, A vessel unto honor, sanctified, and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every, unto every, unto every good work. We close right there. Crescendo. We close right there. Flee also youthful loss. But follow after righteousness. Faith is that the oil, the fruit of the spirit. Faith, Gal chapter 5 of Galatians. Charity, that's love. Peace, that's it my friends. A vessel unto honor that receives the oil, the fruit of the Holy Spirit. My friends, I was blessed today. This was Midday Power Surge. Did you receive your search today? If so, type in the words. Praise God, I received the spiritual surge. Midday power surge. And Sister Henriquez gave us the song. Lord, fill me now. Fill me now. Jesus, come and fill me now. But remember, he cannot feel those who are not empty. He can only fill those who have emptied themselves of every unchristlike word, thought, and action. And it is possible. Send in your prayer requests.